Welcome to a Proxmox tutorial for beginners. Proxmox is a hypervisor which you can use to manage your own virtualization server. For example, Proxmox can be used to create your own cloud. In this video, we are going to cover a very basic setup of Proxmox, which will spread the load of Proxmox and virtual machines over three physical hard drives. This video is split up in the following parts. Prerequisites to following the instructions the end result, how to install Proxmox, how to set up a separate physical hard drive to upload ISO images to, how to set up a separate physical hard drive to create virtual machines on, how to create a virtual machine, and the end summary. This video is meant for beginners who have no previous experience with Proxmox. It is the equivalent of a quick start guide. One. Prerequisites. With these instructions, we assume that you have a server with at least two physical hard drives. One to install Proxmox on and one to create virtual machines on. For this tutorial, we will be using three physical hard drives. One to install Proxmox on, one to create virtual machines on, and one to upload the ISO images to that the virtual machines will use to boot. If you only have two physical hard drives, you can still follow this tutorial by ch skipping chapter 4. In this tutorial, we are going to use Proxmox VE 6.0-1. Please be aware that things may differ with future versions. 2. The end result. The end result of this tutorial will look like this. You have one hard drive dedicated to uploading ISO images. You have another hard drive dedicated to creating virtual machines on. And you have one working virtual machine. For this tutorial, we use the CentOS installation. Now, let's start with the installation of Proxmox. 3. Installing Proxmox. Go to proxmox.com and click on the Downloads section. Here, you can download the latest Proxmox version. For this tutorial, we'll use Proxmox 6.0-1. Put the Proxmox ISO installer on a USB disk and boot your server from it. You'll see the following screen. Press Enter on Install Proxmox VE. This shouldn't take very long. If you get a message here saying hardware virtualization is not supported, please enable this in your, the BIOS of your motherboard. Because this is different for each motherboard, I unfortunately cannot show you exactly how to do this. You can find instructions by googling how to do this with your specific motherboard on Google. After reading the end user license agreement, press I agree. Here we will be choosing the hard disk to install Proxmox on. For my server, I have a 60GB hard drive, a 120GB hard drive, and a 4TB hard drive. I will install Proxmox on the smallest hard drive. Proxmox does not need much space. We recommend not installing Proxmox on a USB device because of device degradation. Go ahead and choose your hard drive and then press Next. Enter your country, time zone, and keyboard layout. For me, they are already correct. Press Next. Choose your root password. You'll use this password to log into Proxmox. Then enter a valid email address. This email address will be used for important notifications. Press next. Proxmox should automatically detect your network settings. Advanced users can make changes here, but we'll press next without making any changes. The next step will be a summary of the settings you entered. Please check if they are correct, and if they are, click the install button. Proxmox will now install itself. This can take some time. The footage is sped up. For me, the installation of Proxmox took only about a minute. This will vary depending on your system specifications. 
the last step of the installation should say that it was a success. Press reboot to make the server reboot and boot into Proxmox. You see this blue screen, do not press any button. Proxmox will continue by itself. Once your server has booted, you'll see this screen. It will list the IP address you entered before, which you can use to access the Proxmox UI in a web browser on a computer in the same network. Please go ahead and do so. Use your web browser on another computer in the same network to access the Proxmox UI. Make sure to use HTTPS, otherwise it may not work. Enter what's shown on the Proxmox machine. In Chrome, it might say your connection is not private. This is OK. Click on Advanced and press Continue. You have now reached the Proxmox login screen. You can log in using the username root and the password you chose during the installation. Press login. You may see a no valid subscription message. This is fine. You can ignore it. Congratulations, you have successfully installed Proxmox. 4. Initializing a hard drive for ISO images and uploading an image. In the main screen of Proxmox in your web browser, select Data Center and go to the node you want to upload ISO images to. By default, this is called PVE. Click on it. Then, in the menu that appears right next to it, move down to Disks. Open the menu and click on Directory. Then, click on Create Directory. We have to create a directory to upload ISO images to. A window with several options will appear. For the first option, you have to choose which disk to upload ISO images to. This should list the remaining disks in your server. I am going to choose the 120GB disk because I am going to use the other one for virtual machines. Select the disk you want to use. For file system, we are going to use ext4. You can use XFS, but for this tutorial, we will not be covering how to do that. Now enter a name for this directory. You may see it throughout Proxmox. I will call it ISOs. Make sure Add Storage is checked. Then click the Create button. It should not take very long. Now you can see we have created a directory to upload ISO images to. You are now ready to upload an ISO image to your Proxmox server. In the menu on the left, expand the PVE menu. You will see an entry with the name you just created. Click on it, go to content, and then press upload. A pop-up should appear where you can select the ISO file you want to upload to your server. In this tutorial, we'll be using a CentOS 8 ISO. Select the file and click on upload. It might take some time depending on the connection to your server. Wait until the upload is finished and you'll be ready for the next step of the tutorial. Five, initializing a hard drive for virtual machines. To create virtual machines on a hard drive, we first have to initialize it. We can do so by going to data center and clicking on the node you're currently using. The default is PVE. Go to disks and click on LVM. By default, there is already one entry that is created on the boot drive of Proxmox. We have to create a new volume group by clicking on Create Volume Group. In the pop-up that appears, you can select the disk that you want to use for virtual machines. I'll be using the 4TB hard drive that's left in my server. The name you choose will appear throughout Proxmox several times, so make sure to give it a name you can recognize. I'll call it VM1. Make sure Add Storage is checked as well, then click Create. It should not take very long and it should show a done message. The disk is now ready to be used for virtual machine storage. 6. Creating a virtual machine To start creating a virtual machine, click on the blue Create VM button 
that is always visible throughout Proxmox. It's in the right upper corner. Give the virtual machine a name you can recognize and click Next. I'll call it CentOS because this is the OS I'll be using. Then click Next. Make sure use the CD slash DVD disk image is checked and the storage you just created is selected as well. I called it ISOs. Next, expand the ISO image menu and you, sh you should see the ISO image you just uploaded. Select it. Make sure guest OS settings are correct as well. These should be set automatically. Press next. For now, we'll skip the system tab. Everything should be correct by itself. Press next. In the hard disk tab, make sure you assign an appropriate virtual disk size. This should not be larger than the size of the physical disk your virtual machine is on. So for me, this will be four terabytes. But make sure to leave enough space for the OS to install. For my CentOS installation, 32 gigabytes should be enough, but I'll change it to 64 for this example. We'll not make any other changes on this page. Press next. Enter the number of cores you want to assign to the virtual machine and select the type of the CPU you want to use. The type of the CPU is very important. If you need more information about this, you can always use the help button that is always visible throughout the creation of the virtual machine in the left down corner. We'll be using host because this provides the best performance. It's at the bottom of the list. For now, I'll assign four cores to this virtual machine. If you don't know which CPU type to use, we recommend using host. This will often guarantee the best performance. Now, press next. Here we'll be allocating RAM to the virtual machine. The amount of RAM you want to enter depends on the operating system you're using. For now, I'll use four gigabytes. Press next. On the network tab, you can configure advanced network settings. For now, we won't change anything. Your virtual machine should have full network capabilities and get its own IP address in the current network. However, keep in mind that in my example, in CentOS, you have to do several commands to get an IP address. We'll not be covering how to do this in this tutorial. Click Next once you're done. Make sure all settings are correct, then press Finish and the virtual machine will be set up. Wait until the virtual machine is created. This can take some time depending on the performance of your server. You'll know it's done once the VM create task in the bottom of the screen says OK. You should see it appear in the menu at the left. Congratulations, you have just created your virtual machine in Proxmox. Select the virtual machine and click Start in the right upper corner. Then click on the console tab and you should see the screen of the virtual machine. 7. Summary In this video we did the following. We installed Proxmox on a server. We set up a separate physical hard drive to upload ISO images to instead of the default installation hard drive. We set up a separate physical hard drive to create virtual machines on instead of the default installation hard drive. We created a virtual machine using the two previous points. Thank you for watching this video. For a written tutorial, please follow the first link in the description below. All links to additional information can also be found in the description. If you have any questions, please comment them down below and we can try to answer them.